Hello, I'm Sister Joanne Iannotti, Art and Spirituality Coordinator here at Wisdom House Retreat Center. Listen to some familiar words. How blessed are the poor in spirit, the reign of God is theirs. Blessed are they who show mercy, mercy shall be theirs. Blessed, too, are the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. These are familiar words taken from the Bible, from that book in the Bible called the Gospel of Matthew. And we have with us today Father John Dunahew, a Jesuit priest, scholar, scripture scholar, and, uh, and author. And Father is giving a weekend retreat on the Beatitudes. When you started the other day, uh, John, you said that the Beatitudes are like the overture to a symphony, that they, they get us ready for what's going to come. So I was wondering, as we you know, are going to be talking about the Beatitudes right now, you know, how can the Beatitudes get us ready, get us ready in, in life? The structure of the Beatitude is that a person is called poor in spirit or merciful because they have received gifts from God. And uh, the first Beatitude captures that beautifully. Blessed are the poor in spirit. That is, people who are not dominated by wealth or greed can open their hearts to God. For the reign of God is theirs. And that's not simply the promise of heavenly salvation. It means that the way God is manifest in the world through the life and teaching of Jesus will characterize these people. And the same with the merciful. Those who are merciful will themselves receive mercy from God. So they are a kind of uh, promise of what happens if you respond to the gospel. They also are an implied commitment to the way you should live. If you are to be happy, uh, because you are merciful or poor in spirit, it means you should uh, li try to live your life according to that view, that those virtues. What do you think are some obstacles that we face today in living out the Beatitudes? Well, I think the Beatitudes uh, really, uh, they call for the creation of a contrast society. I don't mean Christians should be anti the society in which they live, but as the verses that follow the Beatitudes say, when Jesus addresses the disciples, you are to be the light of the world, and to be a light of the world means that you are poor in spirit, you rely more on the power of God than the power of wealth. It means that you are... Uh, meek in the sense you draw your strength from trust in God rather than from earthly power and violence. It means that you can grieve uh, because, uh, and you can mourn. You don't have to disguise the suffering in the world uh, and uh, you can, you will be comforted by sharing your grief with others but more by the fact that Jesus himself went through suffering. So I think uh, they really are ways that we counter many of the values in of our society. The values of power and wealth and the inability to face grief and sorrow at times. Those are good examples for us. And I was wondering, just in terms of some people who are alive today, or maybe those who have been alive, that have lived out these Beatitudes, who might you raise as examples of people who live out the Beatitudes? Well, I, that's a good question. I think a, a legion of saints may come to uh, <laughs> uh, mind. I would certainly pick out one of my favorite saints, even though she hasn't been canonized yet, Dorothy Day. Mm -hmm. uh, Dorothy Day lived a real poverty and a poor poverty of spirit. She was one who sought justice. She certainly was a peacemaker, but she was also a very strong woman. Mm -hmm. uh, I once had the privilege of having dinner with Dorothy Day, yeah. and she was anything but a kind of liberal wimp. Mm -hmm. I mean, she believed that religious commitment uh, required sacrifice and virtue and... Uh, she was angry. This was in the early 70s. She was upset about the number of priests that were leaving the priesthood. She said they should 
recommit themselves and live more authentic lives. That took me back a bit, you mm-hmm. know. But uh, and I would see uh, people from our own time. In a certain sense, uh, I see uh, Martin Luther King is embodying the Beatitudes. But I think the people who most embody the Beatitudes in many ways are loving parents. Mm-hmm. Really, I mean, they are the people who who lives that they. They are available to the weak and the suffering. Uh, they mourn and are sorry over the sickness and loss of children. Uh, they train children in the way of justice and righteousness. So I, I would say uh, my uh, example, people living the Beatitudes are all around us. Mm, that's right, if you only look at them in, in, through the eyes, through the lens of, yeah, the, that's lens right. of, of the Beatitudes. Yeah. Sure. And they would very often they won't look at yeah. themselves uh, through those eyes. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, thank you very much. This is just a, a brief overview of of the Beatitudes and what the Beatitudes can mean in our lives. And so we encourage you. We encourage you to go go back to the scriptures, go back to the Gospel of, of Matthew, and look at the Beatitudes, reread them, and see how they can possibly stir up within you something that can really move you into the future with courage and and with love. And so, thank you again for being with us. This is Sister Joanne Iannotti from Wisdom House, and we look forward to being with you again. Thank you very much.